Okay, can you hear? Can you hear? Yeah, that's perfect. You can go on. All right, thank you very much. I'm going to get started. Getting started. The topic of our presentation is applying a morphological approach in Istanbul's urban landscape. Before that, I wonder if you can switch off uh, your microphone because I'm hearing my voice. Yeah. Okay, we, we close this one. Thank you. The outline of the presentation is urban morphology, historical geographical approach, the concept of morphological region, and its application into Istanbul. Urban morphology is the science that studies the physical form of cities, as well as the main agents and processes shaping it over time. It investigates the physical form and structure of cities, towns, and villages, the way that they grow and change, and their characteristics. This figure presents a synthesis of different aspects of urban morphology. It takes into consideration the main elements of urban form, the agents of change, main approach to urban morphology, the relevance of the field, key research centers, key researchers, and the networks of urban morphology. There are four main approaches to urban morphology that have been developed over last decades. These are historical geographical approach, process typological approach, space syntax, and spatial analytical approach. Historical geographical approach has its origins in the works of German geographers in the early 20th century. These works have a critical importance for the establishment of urban morphology as a field of knowledge. Despite the fact that from 1930s onwards, the morphogenetic approach lost its weight in German geography and it gained a new vitality in the following decades in the works of M.R.G. Konzen that developed in England. The historical geographical approach has a serious axioms and principles. These are respectively systematic townscape composition, the period specific of forms, hierarchical nesting of form complexes, secular socio-political conditioning, persistence of forms, historical stratification of townscape, morphogenetic priority of forms, hierarchical nesting of morphogenetic regions or morphological regions. Konzen developed a number of concepts. These are bridge belt, morphological region, burger cycle, three-party division of the urban landscape, morphological frame, and fixation line to name the most important. The concept of three-party division consists of three elements, town plan or ground plan, building fabric, and land and building utilization. The concept of morphological region is the most prominent concept within historical geographical approach. And for Konzen, it's the climax of the exploration of the physical form, of the physical development of an urban area. A morphological region is an area that has a unity in respect of its form that distinguishes it from surrounding areas, based on the combination of town plan, building fabric, and land utilization. A major aspect of understanding urban landscapes is the identification of morphological regions. These regions provide a framework for establishing the nature and intensity of historical expressiveness of various parts of an urban area. The first attempt for the application of the concept is the seminal work of Enik. In this application, the plan as a whole is examined in terms of morphogenetic types of plan units. Kanzen identified 14 major plan units and 49 subtypes. Starting from the delineated morphogenetic plan units, he proposed a geographical structure of plan divisions grouped into a four order of hierarchy. When moving to Ludlow, unlike the case of Anik, Konzen identified morphological regions. He focused not only on town plan, but also on building fabric 
and end utilization. I recognized a five tier hierarchy of morphological regions. The concept is applied to Ludlow for two times. The first one is in 1975 and the second one is 1988. The main differences between these two applications is the hierarchical regionalization of land and building utilization. What is the utility of the concept of morphological region? The concept of morphological region addresses the assessment of urban character, designation of conservation areas, heritage protection and management, the understanding of historical geographical structure of townscape, the management of urban landscape, a context for urban design and urban spatial continuity and integrity. And what are the main challenges of morphological regionalization? The rigor of morphological procedure, methodological procedures of morphological regionalization has remained elusive. Many papers on morphological regionalization do not offer a robust explanation of how the method is used. The sequence of implementation steps, the identification of each form complex, the recognition of hierarchy, the contribution of each form complex to the hierarchy, the mapping of each form complex and their superimposition that produce the map of morphological regions are the fundamental challenges of morphological regionalization. In this regard, we have proposed a more systematic identification of morphological regions. Our argument for developing this methodology is that it's possible to offer a more applicable and explicit method of morphological regionalization. In this context, a systematic approach for identification of morphological regions has been proposed. The approach is based on a set of criteria aiming at clarifying the application of the method step by step. The general scheme for the identification of morphological regions is presented in this table. Eight criteria have been identified for the establishment of morphological regions. These are as follows. The age of streets, street geometry, pilot layout, building coverage. These are criteria are offered based on the town plan or ground plan. And here, architectural style, building material, and building height are three criteria are proposed on the basis of building fabric. And finally, land and building utilization is offered. Istanbul has a unique urban landscape uh, with its historical and natural values. It was the cradle of three great empires, Roman, Byzantine, and Ottoman. Over this long time period, the city had different names. Byzantium was the name of the first settlement. After the occupation of the city by Romans, it was called Constantinople. In the Ottoman period, its name changed to Istanbul. Despite the unique urban history, the city has not been able to avoid the loss of a significant part of its built heritage. While worth and natural events have always been part of the city life, it was the intense socio-economic pressure felt after the mid-20th century that uh, has led to the most profound transformations in the physical form of the city. And the methodology is applied into a part of Fatih district in Istanbul. First order morphological regions were developed in the whole study area, which is presented in the second figure. Further analysis were only developed in one of these first order morphological regions, which is called Pantocrator Porta Putte, and it presented in the last figure. This table collects historical stages of Istanbul. It starts with the early settlements of Byzantium to the Republican period of Turkey. Two main criteria are recognized for the delimitation of first order morphological regions. These are street age and street geometry. 
Firstly, the map of Street H is revealed based on a set of historical maps of the city that demonstrated in this table. By the analysis of historical maps, the map for the age of streets is identified. By the designation of street age, a general map of regions on this basis is mapped. Secondly, the criterion of street geometry is used. It corresponds how a street system is arranged. Mainly, there are three types of street pattern in the study area. These are grid iron, loose grid, and dead ends. The superimposition of the maps of age of streets and street geometry constitutes first order morphological regions. In this regard, 10 morphological regions are identified. And this table presents the characteristics of first order morphological regions considering age of streets and street geometry. Moving to the second order regions, the Pantocrator Porta Putti region is addressed to implement the method for lower level analysis. Pilot layout and land utilization are two criteria to carry out second order analysis. Firstly, pilot layout has a set of sub criteria such as pilot area, pilot width, and pilot depth. These three maps of pilot layout are the first contributors to the second order morphological regions. Then, Land and building utilization is classified as commercial, housing, and six categories of fringe belt uses. The three maps of pilot layout and the map of land utilization together identified the map of second order morphological regions. In this regard, 19 second order regions are introduced. Pilot area and pilot width contributed in a high way to the hierarchy of regions. Pilot depth has a less contribution to the hierarchy, and the contribution of land utilization is also high. And this table presents the characteristics of second order morphological regions, considering pilot layout and land and building utilization. Moving to third order morphological regions, materials for third order analysis are pilot layout, land and building utilization, building coverage and architectural style. The majority of pilots of the area mostly consist of higher ratio of building coverage. A very small amount of pilots has low building coverage. The land and, land and building utilization map provides an important basis for the establishment of third order regions. And the map of architectural styles is cr created based on the general characteristics and features of buildings. Accordingly, the map of architectural style is categorized into eight styles. And these photographs present buildings with different arch architectural styles within the study area. Instead of superimposition of the maps of third order analysis, each criterion is applied one by one. This stems uh, from the diversity of forms of the area. Firstly, the building coverage is applied, and secondly, land and building utilization and plot layout is taken into account. Afterwards, the criterion of architectural style is applied. This table presents the characteristics of some third order morphological regions, considering building coverage, land and building utilization, plot layout, and architectural style. Moving to fourth order morphological regions, building materials and heights have been two fundamental criteria in order to recognize fourth order morphological regions. Firstly, the map of building materials is categorized into four classes, timber, concrete, masonry, and stone. Secondly, the map of building height is categorized into eight different classes, ranging from one to eight stories. In the identification of fourth order morphological regions, each criterion is applied one by one, as in the case of third order regions. Firstly, building material is applied, and then building height is applied. This comes from the very complex characteristics of the study area. Building material 
contributed to the hierarchy in medium level. Building heights provided a low, a low contribution to the hierarchy. The implementation of this criteria divided third order regions into fourth order regions. This table presents the characteristics of some fourth order morphological regions, considering building materials and height. The discussion of results and conclusions. There are two main categories for the contributions of the methodology that followed in the Istanbul application. The first is the systematization and clarification of the method of morphological regionalization by of offering a criteria-based methodology. These are as follows. The application of the methodology demonstrated that the use of fundamental criteria enables a more robust and systematic method. The mapping of each criterion individually offers higher accuracy for the identification of morphological regions. The clear sequence of steps for mapping morphological regions confirmed a more explicit identification of townscape character. Defining a hierarchical ordering of morphological regions by applying each criterion and then morphological constituents provides more clarity and legibility in the understanding of the urban landscape. Explicit criteria increase the objectivity of the identification of regions. The use of GIS tools in the establishment of morphological regions provides a less time-consuming process. The second category of contributions is about the contribution of the methodology to the urban landscape itself, considering, considering the townscape of Istanbul. These are as follows. Applying the concept of morphological region and the method of morphological regionalization into Istanbul's urban landscape offers a robust basis for the definition of pro planning proposals. Clear identification of morphological regions helps a scientific-based character assessment of the urban landscape. And it enables a basis for form-based zoning for the preparation of municipal plans regulating and organizing the physical transformations. The method is an effective tool in the delimitation of conservation areas. It addresses not only the individual buildings in the townscape, but also the historical geographical structure of the urban landscape components as a whole, namely the town plan, building fabric, and land and building utilization. This helps the permanence of the built heritage by formulating conservation areas of the urban landscape. The method offers a power, powerful scientific basis to the practical management of townscape by a deep understanding and identification of the historical geographical structure of townscape. It contributes to the qualified decisions for the future urban landscape management. And finally, the method provides guidelines for the design of new forms with a strong relationship with extant physical forms. Thank you very much.